Aloha, everyone. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe. We have a most interesting conversation plan for, for all of you out there. I have with me two special guests. Uh, first of all, John Radcliffe. Good morning. Thank you and welcome. And Thank Amasha you. Joyner. And they are united in an effort to bring about the uh, understanding of and hopefully the passage of the ability to have to decide for yourself right. when it's your time to to uh, to pass on so the death with dignity issue or what's the what's the what's the way you best describe it well this is really what this is about is giving people a choice at the end of their life when in fact they're going to die anyway right this is a this is a situation where it's very for very few people who are suffering a terminal disease uh, which is going to cause them agony and suffering and pain uh, at the end uh, and there are several ways to get out of this life right <laughs> you know one of and them this is, is one this is doing one it with, with, yes. with this is this is a better one uh, because it's a it gives the individual uh, patient. So it's kind of like a choice and right. dignity? And yes, yes, it's about choice. And I think 80% of the people of Hawaii support that. Uh, the number 80%, the vast majority of people support uh, death with dignity, compassion uh, in the state of Hawaii. Well, I, I think that's, a, that's, a, that's an extremely serious and interesting yeah. subject. How did you come about to be an advocate for this issue? Well, in, in, um, in June of 2014, I was uh, diagnosed with terminal um, colon and liver cancer, stage four cancer, and given six months to live at that point. Uh, oh. and they said, if you do everything we tell you to, uh, chemo or radiation or surgery or whatever it is, or all three, um, whatever, uh, you might make it 24 months, you know, it could be, so, you know, they gave you a range, basically, and now it's been um, 30 months. Fantastic, congratulations. <laughs> and that's nice, uh, but there isn't any question that I'm terminal. So, how did I get into this? Well, uh, the, the people uh, who are interested in this, who tried to get it passed in, in the past, in the legislature, uh, came to me and, and I said, well, as long as I'm able, you know, yes, I would. I would love to be able to to stand up for this issue. I'm not a lobbyist for it. I'm more. I guess I'm sort of a symbol. Well, right well, now. That, well, that's 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 just, that's interesting because you're known as one of Hawaii's best lobby uh, lobbyists. Yeah, I'm retired. And, and you're doing this as uh, as a private citizen. Yeah. Well, my name is down as a lobbyist because it sure as hell, if you don't put your name down as a lobbyist, somebody will come along. But and nobody's say, paying you. He's a lobbyist. <laughs> no. Okay. No. No. Now I know. I've known Marsha. We have known each other for years. years. I'm not going to name the number of years, <laughs> but I've always known you as being an activist. Yes. You, you're very interested in community affairs. Um, you are very active with the Democratic Party, for example, mostly with a lot of progressive issues. And how, how did you get into this uh, uh, particular issue? I mean, it just seemed a natural cause that. You get to choose who you marry. You right. get to choose where you go to school. You get to choose what movie you're going to watch. You get to choose everything. So why not choose at the end how you're going to leave? Because we're all going to go. But um, some people, like our dear friend here, who, um, well, he's not going to uh, die. It's that, that cancer is going to eat him up, you know. <laughs> so when well. you have people like that, they should be allowed the opportunity, the opportunity whatever that may be. Yeah. What, you know, and, yeah. and uh, um, I'm not going to say what is right and wrong for you or for you. For instance, if you're a Catholic and you chose to be Catholic and the Ch Catholic Church says you don't do this, well, then obviously you don't do this. Right. But why should that stop someone else who is not a Catholic from doing what works for them? Well, you're going to get into the conversation, John. So. Well, um, I forgot what I was going to say, but <laughs> Marcia got going on, <laughs> oh, on dear. that thing. But what this is really all about, also, is not so much, well, it is choice for a person like myself. 
but it's also the law, which has to do with doctors being able to prescribe. And, okay. and currently, the state of the law in Hawaii is that doctors cannot. Uh, now, in the past, the, the Medical Association has taken positions against death with dignity. Because they don't want to be responsible. The Hippocratic Oath and so forth, and I understand all that, and, it, and it's good. Medical science has really gone beyond anything now that we've had in the past. They beyond can, the Hippocratic Oath. I mean, they can keep me alive a yeah. lot longer than, yeah. than I can die with dignity, I guess. But, but the point is that this is for doctors, so that they won't... When they when they see a situation and they offer a, they give a prescription that they won't be put in jail for it to prevent well, that well, from being let criminals. Me, let me ask you that though because you see I, I just uh, whenever you go in for a procedure or in, in, to your doctor for a visit they'll hand you this sheet of paper and it looks like they're giving you a choice because what it says is. Uh, something about I, I don't want to be on life support right, right. these conditions are met and I or I, I want to be and you're keeping me on forever or so I think the third choice is let this person decide whether I should be or not but it looks like uh, you're given a choice and what how is what's there now different from what you are advocating. those are those are in situations where you would accidentally be put into a situation uh, where you were going to be brain dead or something like that then and, and you say no I don't want to be brain dead you know I want to not, not that sort of a situation I'm in a different situation altogether I'm not going into the hospital on the off chance that I might end up dead uh, I'm I'm going to an end of life celebration. Is right. What I'm going to is a certainty here. So, um, but why couldn't you just check the first box? Oh, that when you're in the hospital at that point, don't put me on life support. Well, well, well what's the difference with this and, and that situation? Let's assume that he wants to be at home. That, that right. he doesn't want to be in the hospital. Let's assume that he wants to be home with his wife and children and grandchildren, and that there is no way, no way. But going to the hospital you're, 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 is not going to help. It's just, you know, it's just not going to help. But in so why case, couldn't he choose to have the doctor write a prescription? You see, I think that's a major issue because it, it seems for some people that because you, if you're at home by yourself, you have no life support anyway, it's going to be natural, it's okay. Um, and if you in the hospital and they remove the life support, I don't see the same objection by the people. But what you're advocating is actually a step more than that, which is getting somebody to actually assist. N not really. The doctor signs a prescription. I have to do it but myself. He has to take it himself. Uh, he has to. I can't be assisted. He, the doctor okay. can't assist. You're taking it for yourself. Yeah. Okay. It has to be. You have to take, be able to take pills. Yeah. You know. I. You know. And it was. It's that particular point that interests me, because uh, when you really look at it, and I, I, I'm going to say this, and and might be controversial, might even be, um, uh, you know, some people might even not like to hear it, but really when you take somebody off of life support, you're actually starving the person to death. Isn't that horrible? I think and that's, that's a horrible way of dying. It is, it is. And so I, I, in fact, I actually had this discussion with one of my doctors. I said, I don't want to check this. No. Feed me as long as I can eat, you <laughs> yes. know? I mean, put food in my body. Well, this, yes. is, I, this is a Hawaiian body, you know? <laughs> you don't do that. If we of have course. an ethic at all, you keep eating <laughs> until you, you know. But what this, at least from my point of view, seems to allow, which I find, you know, actually quite um, uh, acceptable, is the idea that I can actually not have to starve to death. I can actually die with dignity yes. because it's my choice, mm -hmm. uh, however right. the, the right. procedure is. And I'm not going to be just removed from life right. support. I'm going to actually, you know, get something that will put me to sleep. Yes. And... You, you have to be of sound mind. You have to be able to take it yourself. Right. I can't administer it to grandma. You know, that's out. This has to be your choice, your doing. Nobody else can do well, it for you. Some people, so, well, actually, because of what I just described, is why I, <laughs> along with uh, Governor Ariyoshi, Governor Caetano, 
uh, Governor Abercrombie as, and myself signed a, a, actually an opinion letter to the newspapers. That's very helpful. It to was me, great. You know, yeah. Thank supporting you. it yeah. because it, to me, you really right. need a fifth, uh, a fourth option. Right. You know, the option not not to be <laughs> starved eat brain dead forever or uh, have somebody well, else choose for you. It's, no. it's interesting also that it, there are now seven sta six or seven states, I think, that six states that have uh, this sort of statute. Uh, and there are 20 more, including Hawaii, uh, that are up this year. So it is uh, a movement which is not unique to Hawaii. It's certainly been sweeping the nation. And I, I expect you're going to see this become the law of the land eventually. Uh, I know that in those states where, where this has become the norm, uh, people feel, they just, Feel that, that that they're more comfortable. That they're that they're not they're not on edge. They're not anxious about the about, matter of dying right. as much. And and even for people who are never going to ask for it, you know, yeah, probably really. never will. Yeah, it's they they think it's nice that their state has it because they might. Well, one of the objections up, up to this that I have heard uh, are people who say that when you reach that point in life, you really are not as rational as you should be. Look and, at me. Well, what, what, yeah, okay. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. Well, what do you say? Look at me. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. He's a pretty rational, yeah. No, is there any, I mean, is Come there on. any credence to that? Is there any studies or anything? No, no. No, that's, that's, no, that's no. a fallacy. That's a, yeah. I used to be a debate coach. There's about a million argumentative fallacies, <laughs> red herrings that you can do. That's a red herring. That's a red herring. Yeah. That's right. like, oh, yeah, it's going to cause teenagers to well, commit suicide. There, no, exactly. No. Is, there, is there any, no. is there Anything that you can think of in terms of the opposition against having this done opposition. that is rational, outside of the fact that somebody says, I just believe that I shouldn't do this to myself. And, and, and if and, and they believe that, then they that, shouldn't. that shouldn't. That's right. Exactly. Absolutely. There are, Absolutely. There are people that believe that God exactly. is the only person. That, yeah. Yeah, even if I don't, but see, I happen to believe well, that God doesn't want me to starve to death. But, you know, that's just me. This whole well, world of ours uh, is in turmoil because of religion. So yes, no, we've, we've been down that road <laughs> well, with yeah, religion. Yeah, but basically, I, I do believe, though, that if you, there might be a religious objection, but because of belief. But outside of that, you, you have not come across anything. No, yeah. doctors are now neutral, I yeah, think. And I think the, the religious belief, like I stated before, if that is your belief, then by all means, that's what you do. Okay. You don't impose that on someone else. Well, I can't tell him, no, well, you can't well, do that. Well, we are going to take a short break, and we're going to come back, and I would like both of you to tell us what people can do about uh, make, moving us all forward. Okay, So Great. thank you. Hey, has your signal just been taken over, or am I supposed to be here? This is Andrew, the security guy, your co-host on Hibachi Talk. Please join us every Friday on Think Tech Hawaii. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Aloha, my name is Josh Green. I serve as Senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on Think Tech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our healthcare system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting Think Tech. Governor, right there. Oh. Aloha, and welcome back to this most interesting conversation. Our guest today, uh, John Radcliffe and Marsha Joyner, both who are advocates for dying with dignity, I guess uh, we'd, we'd call it. Now, for those of you that want to participate in this conversation, you can call us at 415-871-2474. Now, here we are. We went through, uh, you know, some of the reasons for doing this. Now, 
I am told that there's going to be a meeting at the legislature tomorrow. Or something's happening Public at the legislature. Public forum tomorrow night at, at the state legislature in the auditorium, Marsha, at 5.30 to 7, seven or so. Uh, and it's, it's being uh, put on by our organization, Compassion. Com what's the name of the organization? I'm trying to think. Compassion and, and choices. choices. Yeah, not compassion, compassion and, and choices. Right, mm -hmm. right. Compa and and that or that organization is sponsoring it. Yeah. But everybody uh, who wants to learn more about this should come down and have an opportunity to talk about it if they want to, or listen to those people who are going to be able to speak tomorrow. And I understand they have some speakers lined up for tomorrow. And these are speakers that... They're all going to be in favor of... Uh, of yeah. 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 Of, but, they, but they are have had experience yes. somewhere with this... Right. Uh, One of them will be, will be Dr. Uh, Chuck Miller, who is, uh, along with myself, is a plaintiff in a suit um, against the state of Hawaii on the issue to determine well, the law. Yeah. Well, so you're suing the state We're again, right? <laughs> I've never sued the state. Somebody's no, no. suing the state. Well, some no. of your clients have. My clients have sued the state. No. Yes, many please, times. Uh, please tell us about the suit because. Yeah, yeah uh, really. Yeah. Tell us. Tell well, us. The, the suit uh, is 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 there because uh, both the most recent attorneys general in the state of Hawaii have opined that uh, medical doctors do not have the right to prescribe. Uh, such a prescription that 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 would. No, I, I want to understand so, something. What so we're talking about. That. This is not Doctor Zagarian, right? I mean, the, no, the, no, the no. image that people no, have. No, no, no. And actually, he's a great pioneer. I'm not trying to knock him in the sense. Kabarkian or something. Kabarkian. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. He brought this. So no. it's not somebody going around. No. You're so not one asking of the, doctors. One of the no. doctors who will be speaking tomorrow oh. uh, will be uh, Doctor Chuck Miller, and he is the former head of oncology at Tripler Hospital and he's also been the head of oncology, I believe, at Kaiser Hospital. So, um, you know, he's retired now, but he is a long-standing oncologist expert in the field. So he'll be and there so what, what the So what you're trying to do is not get doctors to actually administer anything. No. no. Just prescribe. Why not open it up to pharmacists as well as doctors? I, I'm just curious. No, 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 no. Doctors, medical doctors, this isn't something that's going to be, you know, it's going to be out there. This isn't death panels, Governor. This is a very specific sort of legislation right. for people who are terminally uh, and ill and in pain and suffering. With all kinds of safeguards to make sure many, that many this safeguards. Oh, my goodness, yes. Yeah. And as it moves through the legislature, everybody puts in another safeguard. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, you they, know that. They, they you know that. Too <laughs> safeguarded into oblivion. But, you know? Well, you understand that. The, so tomorrow night, and this is at 5 o'clock. 5.30. 5.30 at the auditorium. Uh, auditorium at Capitol. So all of you out there, really, this is your right. chance to really learn about the learn subject and ask questions really all of those all of the questions you just asked the, this is the time to ask those questions to satisfy yourself now you know my issue of course is different because he's a survivor this is a real survivor well he's a real hero no i meant you got you know he he's survived oh TB, <laughs> he survived polio and he's gonna survive this too now but if you look at the side effects on some of the medications oh. that doctors prescribe every day and one of them says death, what in the world, how can they say, well, we take an oath not to do any harm? Some of those medications that they prescribe do, do harm. harm. Do harm. Yes. Well, yeah. I had an earlier show with medical marijuana, and we right. demonstrated that the, some of these medications oh. are a lot worse, worse. Than, than, than you can the, do. The, now, the I'm going to change the I'm subject is, about, no, about marijuana. No, no, we're not going to get no, to that. No, no, one, one little thing. If you look at who owns the patent for marijuana from 1949, it's the U.S. government. Exactly. They've owned marijuana since 1949. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, back. I want to put marijuana all together. Right? Yeah, back to but but the, you, you're right. The, the, the medications <laughs> that are being prescribed for people, look at for the painkillers. <laughs> This, my, my wife, you know, Ooh. suffering, uh, had, had a problem, broke, you know, had yeah. hurt her arm, and she, she gets, they prescribe this, she's in severe pain, they prescribe this painkiller, and which she faithfully tries to take, but it has so many side effects. Oh, it's, it's awful. It's, it's, it's yeah, painkillers pain and all the morphine-centered drugs are, 
are, are, are very difficult. But, you know, when, when you're talking, now this is very seriously talking about, about uh, dying here. So the, the fact is that the chemotherapy itself, the radiation itself, well, these things are rough. Tough, uh, yeah. So, um, you know, I've had 40, 43, I believe, three day infusions I start my 44th uh, next week, Monday, a week from wow. today. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll be in this phase for another three weeks, and then I'll go through that for another three weeks. And the, the side effects of the chemo are different at different times. So for right now, the chemo is keeping the cancer at bay in my right. body. Right. At some point, it could be tomorrow, it could Excuse be two me. years from now, it could be, I don't know, but at some point that'll change right. and my body will go into a quick decline. Well, see, this Always pays to the, be prepared, the, Governor. Yeah, which uh, I think reinforces uh, Marsha's point, and that is doctors are already prescribing as a necessity for, uh, for health reasons very dangerous things anyway. And um, so what, but this will not, this does not, your bills or what you're supporting does not require them to administer it. No. As a matter okay. of fact, all it, in fact, the doctor has to be, has to agree that you, you're a terminal. So that's a, actually a protection. Right. Two doctors, two right. doctors. Two have doctors, been. okay. So two doctors will well, say you're terminal and there's that's nothing all we they can do. do. That, there's nothing else well, we can do. Well, one of them, you know, or the other may, give you a prescription, but, but I mean, you know, it. Right, but first you, they have to But determine. doctors, it, this is a medically determined medical, and it's so a medical it's, term. Yeah, yeah, right, so this I is mean. not something, you know. Now, uh, we have some bills in the legislature. There are a number of bills in the legislature. I wouldn't get hung up on numbers at this point. But the issue is, the issue, what do they call it? How do they refer well, to it? Well, it's related to medical aid in dying. Medical aid in dying. They, yes. that, Related to medical, medical aid, aid in, in, in dying. dying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or not, or death with dignity. No. 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 Medical yeah. aid and yeah. dying. Medical right. aid in dying. Because yeah. I, you know, I, I'm using that phrase, yeah. uh, that, but it seems to be a little passe. Actually, it seems to be a little. Old. Well, I no, think I like this phrase a lot yes. better. Well, the, death with dignity is the name of the Oregon mm -hmm. uh, organization. Ah. Oh that started the whole thing. So that's why people use it, because it's the organization, just like Compassion and right, Choices, right. is the name of an organization. But that's the one that started in Oregon, so the name has just evolved. Yeah. And uh, John, you know the legislative process. Uh, where are these bills right now? Bills are in front of the health committee on both sides. Okay, uh, who and so, the, who so the that, in the, in the, in the House side, that's uh, Representative Della Bellotti. Okay. Uh, and and uh, she's easy to find in the legislature. It's under B, and just go and click right on that. <laughs> Della Bellotti. No, yeah. Yes, Bellotti. BB, right? Della Bellotti, B, yeah. easy to find. Oh, DB. DB, D -B. B -B. not yeah. BB. Not Bella. Uh, Della. And in the, and in the, uh, and in the Senate, it's Ro Senator Rosalind Baker. Okay. She's, she's a. Uh, so would you there. recommend that I recommend that, that people, people call these uh, well I, I don't recommend that they inundate the four members of the legislature but I do recommend that everybody uh, try to let their legislators know best they can not only these two to chairmen but whoever yeah. represents them right. uh, I, I think you know every legislator needs to be touched in this one yeah and uh, the uh, speaker Suki Speaker Suki made it one of his uh, from his state of this well, uh, when he opened the legislature. He said that was one of his issues. priorities. Mm -hmm. So well, this is the spe one of the, the yes. This will be one of the speaker's, speaker's priorities. This is yes. one of the speaker's priorities. He was ever so kind to invite me down on the floor. Yeah. Uh, on opening day, as a matter of fact, which is a, a, a terrific honor, and I, I, I'm very grateful. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad he's sponsoring. In addition to the speaker, is there any other champions then in yeah, the um, legislature? On the Senate side is um, Senator Lorraine Inouye, mm -hmm. right. and our new senator, uh, Carl Rhodes. Carl Rhodes. Oh yes, right. Carl was uh, Carl Rose, wasn't he health chairman in, in the in the, the, in the, the house. House. Carl was judiciary, judiciary, judiciary chairman. Judiciary chairman. Judiciary yeah. chairman. So he's how does the judiciary get the judici take judici all of this? Judiciary is going to be fine with it. Both of them go to judiciary chairs. 
uh, in the so it's going to go to health and judiciary. Right. And that's it. So it's going to go to those two committees. Now there are a number of bills and go through the process. This is still only January. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know, so, but we need you know, to. Uh, we need to know. get people to let. I think the most important thing is it get educated. Yes. It, and absolutely. Tell your legislators, those you know personally, whether you see them in the supermarket or anything like that. Tell them that death with dignity legislation, that legislation which you know choices for that Radcliffe is talking about. Go with that. <laughs> yeah, we, our champion here. Yeah. Oh, there are no champions. Get the numbers. Yeah, so well, we need you know, people to do this. I, I really am getting uh, more acquainted with the issue. I mean, I sort of went along, I, you know, understood it. It didn't have any meaning until actually recently when. Um, you know, when I, when I was invited to sign the letter, and then I actually really read up on it. I mean, just me. It sort of seemed logical, yeah. but emotionally I wasn't tied to it. But no, I, I, I am. I think. The, I think the governor did a, you did a lot on this I think, earlier. Was, I think it was, was wonderful. Was, uh, yeah, you, all of your work was, was terrific, but, you know, Caetano actually put a committee together, did some stuff on right, it. Right, exactly, know, he yeah. Was, he was, uh, you know. He was really active Venice, on yes. it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so, good again, there's tomorrow evening, again, what time was it again? 5.30, I guess. 5.30 at 5 the auditorium. at the state uh, capitol auditorium. Right, right. I just want everybody out there to, to know that. And then we have these bills that they can talk to their uh, legislators right. about. On the House side, the, the chairman of the first committee that will be viewing this is, uh, is Della Bellotti, Bellotti. Is Representative Bellotti. And I think the judiciary chairman is in the, in uh, the Scott. Senate is Scott Nishimoto. Scott Nishimoto. And uh, he's new chairman, excellent, going to be an excellent chair. Um, really looking forward to his work. Right. Uh, and, you know, of course, in the in the uh, Senate, it's Gil Agaron, so. All right. And uh, with that, um, I think this is a, a most moving issue, and it... Uh, I want everybody out there to at least know about it, you know, right. study well, it yeah. and uh, get that done. So again, all of you, take the opportunity to go and go to the uh, workshop, the auditorium at the state capitol, and talk about death with dignity, talk about um, medical aid and medical aid in dying. Medical aid in dying. <laughs> yes. Be very grateful, folks, if you do that. We would start getting active on this. Right. So thank you very much, and we look forward to you joining us in two weeks. <laughs>